Last episode, we finally reached the age of machining, the age of making our own weapons, our own armor, and today we expand on the research that we gained, making ourselves more weapons, make ourselves more defense, and make ourselves more armor. And hopefully today we can finally achieve the goal of defense. Bedrooms is a side goal. I, I who can who needs to sleep? We need guns, big ol' bum bums, big ol' rooty tooty point and shooty things. Plan for today is very simple. We're going to be building up our arsenal, building ourselves up with lots of weapons, defense up, be able to defend ourselves from raiders, and go from there. So if you enjoy any of today's episode, we're excited to see whether or not Donny T gets a weapon that he can actually use and not just, I don't know, have fun with. Classic Donny T. Consider liking, subscribing, and make sure you tell your mum about it. Let's get into things, and I will look at what we are queuing up at the moment. So at the moment, we're doing a chainsaw, a grinder, and a cult python, right? The chainsaw is just for Cottonwood to be able to do her jobs better. The grinder is for when we recruit Encon Kama, and the cult python is for Chad Chadson. So at the moment, Chad Chadson's got a weapon, Robert's got a weapon, Coke has an MP7 at the moment, which kind of suits his character. I think we want to get have a weapon that's quick, fast firing, not necessarily does a lot of damage, but something that it does, is very sort of nimble and agile. Dr. Jew, I can't work out what weapon suits him at the moment, and Donny T needs something explosive. What do we have that's explosive? So, so far, we have the Javelin, which is single use, not much point making another one of those, the M72 Law, the Anti-Armor Rocket Launcher, an N-Law, Grenade Launchers. Okay. I feel like we should probably make the next best or next cheapest one because I'd assume that's not going to be single use. So let's try a M72 Law and I hope that this isn't a single use. That would be ideal. So we'll make the tools first, then the weapons, and then go from there. Um, what, despite me saying that we weren't necessarily going to focus on bedrooms, it's still going to be a big plan for us today. We've got two bedrooms nearly kind of ready. I just need to like build the rooms for them. Um, and the ones up here are kind of going to be started on as well. And we'll go from there, honestly. I think once we've been able to defend ourselves and be able to fight raiders without just relying on Chad Chadson, then we can start moving back into the oil field and then try to get more re And a sapling child! When a colonist with sapling birth gene becomes pregnant, they need to designate a place to plant their offspring. Hold on a second. Cottonwood is pregnant? Oh, I didn't expect this. This was not something I'd planned for this series. Genuinely had not planned for. Well, Coke Coca-Cola, the pizza boy himself, uh, taking after his, his father Branston Chunk in the uh, just being really fertile. Nice. Congratulations. You're going to be a father? That's going to be one weird baby. Um, plant sapling child. We can just plant it anywhere as well. We can literally plant that baby anywhere. Um, I think for the time being, we'll, we'll keep it planted in the ruins. Just because it's fairly safe here. Um, but yeah, there it is. The mother xenotype is a Pollux kin, but the father is a demon. So... Who knows what this is going to create? Not something I want to think about, honestly. Uh, how long is it going to be? 30 days. 30 days. There we go. Perfect. Encon Kamna has been recruited. Welcome, Encon Kamna. Um, as a reminder, Encon Kamna, very, very good con. It's not somebody I necessarily wanted to pick up at the time, but the, the critical passion in construction, to pair that with giganticism, great memory, don't pair that with depression, but you get where I'm coming from. A absolutely fantastic builder for the colony, someone that we've needed for quite a while. It means we can take Dr. Jew off construction. We can take just so many people off construction and get them to do other jobs. Absolutely fantastic for us. As we get back into research, as we finally get Encom Camera, so Dr. Jew can more things, drug production has come up. Uh, was not something I was looking at getting into quite yet. I want to establish more of a base, but you know what? Why not push Coca-Cola to their absolute limit and start feeding them a load of drugs? It was a goal of this series, obviously, to test the Go Juice Impervious, the Psychot Impervious, and the Smoke Leaf Impervious, just to see what it did, honestly. So let's add uh, drugs to the list of things to do. And let's get Coke coked up. Drug production has been complete, and the next research we've got is hydroponics. I would much prefer mortars, nothing more American than being able to use artillery and different types of mortars to destroy tribals, but hydroponics are going to be fantastic for us for just being able to grow 
uh, drugs. <laughs> and that's going to be about it. Um, I'm getting close to ticking off the defense checklist for the time being. At the moment, Coke has got their weapon. Robert has got their weapon. Chad chadson has got their weapon. Microsoft does actually have their weapon as well. Um, and then Cottonwood and Encom Camera currently have just kind of uh, tools that they can use as weapons. And you know what? I'm happy with that. Everything is looking decently well and everybody's decently equipped. Microsoft does have the Brooklyn Smasher if they'd be willing to get it out. There we go. So everybody is actually fairly well equipped. All they need now is armor. Uh, Donny T's law has also been built. Holy moly. <laughs> oh, hello, M72 law. You are looking very attractive tonight. Donny T, get that equipped. There we go. So Donny T's now got that law equipped. It's just so American. MAGA Donny T with an M72 law. It's just so perfect. How does it work? Is it the same as the javelin? I think it is. Uh, let's grab it. Let's get closer to the structure down here. And let's aim for it. Hopefully this isn't a single-use weapon. Uh, so he charges it up. It takes a while. And then, boom. There it is. Is it a single-use weapon? Yes, it is, for fuck's sake. <laughs> ah! <laughs> right, the next explosive that we need to trial is the is the anti-armor rocket launcher. Okay, let's give that one a go and see if that is single-use or not. This one is only 20 steel and 30 chem fuel, so if it isn't single-use, I'll be quite surprised. Uh, if our first test of the new weapons... And pack of man halting ballrins. What's a ballrin? Holy! What the? What is that? Ugh! It's ugly. Uh, ballrins are extremely aggressive predators. Seldom speak. Seldom seen in the wild. They are ravenous beasts with an appetite for rotting corpses and living flesh. Ah! Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Not what I want to be dealing with. Um, let's grab the colonists with long range weapons with this Chad. And coke, and that's it. And then everybody else, I think, can actually sit inside. I'm low-key kind of scared of this, actually. Oh, no. Microsoft has been caught out in the wild. Oh, Microsoft. At least they have either the jackhammer or the Brooklyn Smasher, depending on how they feel. Microsoft. you got to attack them, Microsoft. Oh, it's so American using the baseball bat. I love it. Um... Okay, but at the same time, what is going on up here? So we've been raided by these barins, but there's a load of... They're attacking horses for some reason. All right, okay. Uh, Coke and Chadson, you need to go help Microsoft or things are going to go badly. How are you doing? Microsoft just bashed off its tail in one hit. Holy sh... Holy! Microsoft is a monster. He's done it. He's, she's, he's done it. He's downed it. All right, you can go search and destroy Microsoft. You know what? You're all, you're 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 good to go. I think we can all go search and destroy. I don't actually think they're that powerful. Yeah, I think the Balrins, rather than actually going for our colonists, are just going for any sort of food on the map. Um, at the moment, they're going for horses. Uh, there's one over here that's trying to melee attack a squirrel and is now attacking a chocobo. I don't think this is really a man hunting pack. More so, just angry demons. I've noticed as well the first lot of clean sweepers are just stating. Robert is working on these basic subcores as he should do, as he remembers. A throwback to his previous life and he's probably extremely good at it and very skilled. Perfect. So I think once we've done the clean sweepers, I think I will queue up a couple of agrahans just to help with up with keeping up with wood production. At the moment, I just can't keep up with it at all. Cottonwood, as good as she is... Oh, sorry, I won't interrupt you. As good as she is at plant cutting and everything, and with the chainsaw as well, is extremely powerful and extremely strong. Just not quick enough, and we need another pair of hands. Hopefully, we have to remedy that with another couple of agra hands. And a shuttle has crashed down nearby. Are there any survivors for us to... Help. <laughs> uh, there are two survivors. Umbra Dark like Nighthawk. What an absolutely sick name. Desensitized, far sizeful, and restful child. One in construction, five in medical. Not somebody I'm actually after, so I'm gonna I'm gonna strip you naked and steal your clothes. And then we have Sonia Wilson, 
who is a vampire. Very interesting. However, they are unwavering the law, so we can't particularly do anything about that either. So we're going to strip them and just let them do their thing, honestly. I have no need for you. I'm sorry. And our first little clean sweeper has emerged. Hello, my little friend. Welcome to the squad. Uh, what are you on? Work and just do your thing at the moment. Perfect. Nice. But a clean sweeper at the moment is going to be fantastic for us because, as I said earlier, this place is a dump. And hopefully this should bring up people's moods by, by it not being a total dump. And a Joramir is hunting coke for food. That's not good. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? it was bad if this thing starts hunting you? Uh, thankfully, coke is arguably quicker than it by like a long way. But if coke doesn't know he's being hunted, I'm not sure what he's going to do, honestly. Coke. 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 Run. Please run. Thank you. All right. Okay. This isn't too bad. Yeah, this is why we need to give Coke, like, a very sort of, like, quick weapon. Because he's just... He's just very quick, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Poor thing just got bullied. Oh, this the happy smile of a man that's bullied an animal to death. You love to see it. There you go. So all the bedrooms are now complete with one extra for one more colonist that I'm looking to pick up. It looks good. I'm happy with the way this base looks. I like the little walkways and everything. And having all the bedrooms kind of nicely symmetrical placed out. Ignore the fact that this overlaps onto the sand. I promise there's water underneath. That I promise. <laughs> but that is the bedrooms complete. We can tick it off our list for today's episode. It's done. I don't want to have to think about making any more bedrooms unless it's for a special occasion. Next, we're going to focus on drugs. Drugs. The marijuana, Mary Jane, the good stuff. Now, in order for us to make a drugs lab, we're going to have to build two separate buildings, right? We're going to have to build one building specifically for hydroponics and one building specifically for making and storing said drugs. So we're going to have a section that's going to be a little bit out of shape and out of the ordinary for what we're going to be doing. But we also need to be able to keep it close enough to where people are going that it's easily accessible and during any time of the day so how do we do this <laughs> i think actually where we want to be putting it is down in this little section here and after thinking about it coke is the one that's going to be doing most of the drug production the drug making it's going to be coke and it needs to be close to the kitchen where he works it needs to be close to where he sleeps so it's just down here but still on his way to work so why not put it in this section here have like a big area for the hydroponics and then like a little room off to the side that could actually connect to the freezer here for the drugs yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be very expensive because I think hydroponics need to go onto the steel floorings. Um, yeah, they need medium support. Okay, kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. So if we build a bridge that's connecting to the kitchen freezer, that means that we can expand the kitchen freezer out. More space, always nice. And that can be where we also store all the drugs at the same time as well and kill two birds with one stone, I think. So I've queued up a rather large area here. So it's going to be part of it is going to be for the freezer about up to there. And then this other smaller section will be just for making the drugs. A very large drugs lab, obviously. But we're not going to necessarily use all that space. And a lot of it will be filled in with just the drugs labs things and it'll be there for aesthetic. The hydroponics is what I'm worried about. It's going to be so expensive so so expensive um i think if we build it down to about here and then open it out into a large area here that will look good plan it out as a circle to start with because then i can fill in the hydroponics around it um that there is about the middle of this little like area here connect it up about that size the entrance can be just around there i think yeah i like that it's like a long time. It's going to be a long-term project, which leads me on to another project that we need to add to the list. Bedrooms are done. Droogs are in progress. Defense is more or less there. I need a couple more weapons, and we're still waiting on some research. Next, we need to focus on resources. Now, in order for us to get these resources, we're going to have to do deep drilling, microelectronics, all those basic rim world things. Uh, whilst we have now done build base, we've now more or less done defense. We need the resources to be able to supply all of this and continue with our goals. So I think the first one we need to do is resources. How are we going to get resources? Deep drilling, those sort of things. But what if we make vehicles, right, and travel across the world to go get these 
different mining sites and everything. Like, there's a thousand silver just sitting there with five people. You know, there's 112 heavy fur with some pemmican. Uh, we could go to all these different abandoned labs, mine everything up, steal from all these abandoned areas, and do the American thing of taking what, taking back what is rightfully ours. Uh, we also have a few tribal people that haven't quite worked out that we're the enemy and are willing to trade with us. So that's always handy. And a cougar is hunting Microsofts for food. No, not the cougar. Uh, honestly, Microsoft, I don't know, beat the cougar. Just do your thing with a baseball bat, beat it. <laughs> it's just, I'm not, I'm not really worried about this, honestly. Microsoft is an absolute monster, especially with that baseball bat. Um, cougar, please? Yeah, easy peasy for Microsoft. I mean, why am I not surprised? There is the first step in making vehicles to travel across the world. Engine making uh, always helps to have an engine in order to make yourself a vehicle. With that, as a subsection to getting resources, we're also going to add cars to the list. Uh, just very vague cars, automobiles, helicopters, anything that allows us to carry people to certain places and gather resources. That'll do, you know. If I could, I think we're going to have drug resources as the top priority mm. alongside cars, then defense, then drugs. Um, drugs is always going to be there on the list. It's always going to be a very high priority in my mind. But for the rip playthrough, it's it's going to go to go to the bottom, honestly. <laughs> and we've just started other research for blowback operation. Now, do any of these weapons fit Doctor Jew, Donny T, Encon Kamner, or Cottonwood as a character? I mean, a Desert Eagle is arguably more American than the Colt Python. I mean, I, if we can't find a rocket launcher to give to Donny T, a Desert Eagle is probably the next best thing, honestly. And speaking of rocket launchers, what is the next one that we need to make? Oh, we made the anti-armor rocket launcher. I forgot about that. <laughs> I got completely thrown off track with build base. There it is. Looks very lovely, very attractive. Donny T, there you are, my friend. Uh, blow up that specific wall there. Is this single use, yes or no? Uh, yeah, another single-use explosive. Classic. Okay, what is next on the explosive list? We've done them all. Oh, no, we've got the N-Law here. I honestly, I don't. I think they're all going to be single-use. I don't think there are any explosive weapons that are multiple-use. That's kind of a shame. Okay, well, what we'll do is when we research blowback operation, we will actually give Donny T a Desert Eagle. Definitely fits him the best. Ooh, and looking through the rest of the weapons, just trying to find something to give to Dr. Jew to fit his character. A katana. What is Dr. Jew's purpose in this playthrough? He is a character that is designed to make Chad Chadson into a furry. You know, maybe Dr. Jew himself is, you know, a sympathizer to the cause. Maybe he himself appreciates a good furry. A cat girl, perhaps. Dr. Jew definitely deserves a katana. 100%. Can we make him a fedora as well? Yes, we can. Dr. Jew will have a fedora, whether he likes it or not. A, do <laughs> a fedora and a katana. Oh, God. Um, I don't know what all the different ones are at all. I guess we make that one, because that's got red on it, and red looks cool. There it is. We've actually fully moved out of the old first base. Um... Apart from, obviously, the sapling child that's still sat here doing its thing, we've completely moved out. It feels nice. It feels good. We're moving on to bigger and better things. I obviously can't completely deconstruct this relic yet because of the child that's living here. But, I mean, we can use it as target practice. <laughs> the, 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 the base, not the child, I might add. Bill complete. Make a fedora hat. Perfect. Where have you put my lovely, lovely fedora? There it is. I spotted the light leather fedora hat. Dr. Jew, put that bad boy on. The character argued never knew you needed. <laughs> the backpack as well and the big overcoat. Oh my god. Holy moly. <laughs> there it is. The katana has been complete. Dr. Jew, equip your katana. Become the weeb you were designed to be. Oh, dear. <laughs> so now we have Mr. Mount Dr. Jew Jew. Mr. Mountain Jew has his fedora and katana ready to assist you, m'lady. 
Oh dear. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Iron world, messy, workaholic, inquisitive. You know, it just does work, doesn't it? It does. Ah, uh, it's perfect. You're perfect, Dr. G. You are perfect. Congratulations. And a crate with a chainsaw Joris has been spotted. Usually, if these animal transport pods come down, I just kill the animal. I'll be totally honest with you guys. I just eat them. A tasty, usually. But a chainsaw Joris is very American. Very, very, very American. And you know what? I'm actually going to put the effort in to try and save this animal just so then we can become friends with it. Okay, so unfortunately, Erin decided that she didn't want to be saved and stood back out. Ignore the fact that she's bleeding everywhere. Um, I guess I'll try save her if she goes down, but the chainsaw dress has gone down. Erin finished them off. These poor clean supers came in here to clean up the blood, and the animal just kept wandering around bleeding everywhere. It was like the perpetual sufferance of just constantly cleaning up blood. Oh, you poor clean sweeper. You poor, poor clean sweeper. Uh, let's try save this chainsaw, Joris. It'd be quite nice to have our mascot, you know. Ask rescue animal joined. Yes, we have ourselves a colony mascot. I will take name suggestions in the comment section for today's episode. Yeah, Erin, welcome. <laughs> there was one thing in this series as well that I was thinking that I was missing out on. We're very American, as you can probably tell by Donny T, Doctor Ju. Chad Chadson and all those exciting people. There's one thing this series was missing out on. The one iconically American thing that makes Americans who they are. Concrete mixers. Concrete baby. All right. There's one thing that we haven't done enough of. And that's ruin the environment with concrete. Side goal of the series. Um, <laughs> cover map in conk. Cover map in concrete baby. Complete side goal. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe not. Maybe maybe we live like a, save a very small patch of grass for the animals to live, so we can continue to eat them. That's even more American, isn't it? That is just so American. Yeah, cover map in the concrete bay B. But I decided to make some concrete as well, just so we can like have a brick material that we can use throughout our time here. There it is, the most American thing that we can create this series, the prolific desert eagle. And this one is actually excellent quality and is infused, the Mech Tech Advanced Desert Eagle. Perfect. And who better, other than the man, the myth, the legend, Maga Donny T. Dolphin, to give the weapon. He just is so American. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I just love it so much. Perfect. It, it's, it's, it's perfect. Um, I, I assume eventually we'll probably be able to get a launcher that we can reuse, reduce, and recycle. Uh, because it's not really worth constantly making rocket launchers that we have to then keep equipping. It feels like a lot of effort, honestly. And with that, I think we can actually tick defense off the list. Now, this isn't the end of the defense, right? And everybody's wearing just random clothes that I've been queuing up. It's not exactly the most protective. Um, and obviously, we are living literally just undefended. We have no kill box or anything. We have no defenses. We have no protective wall apart from the water. So, I think we're going to call it today for today's episode because I've, I've completed one of the big tasks I've had for the past few episodes and we know where we're going for next episode. Next episode, I want to focus on obviously getting resources. I want to focus on getting cars. And I want to start working on getting enough concrete to build around this little inlet so we have a defendable position. That is going to be the plan for next episode. So if you have enjoyed today's episode and are excited to see the fact that all of our colonists now have weapons. Oh, it does look incredible. It does just look so good. And I'm honestly, <laughs> yeah, I don't like the way they all look very much the same. It's also if they're wearing like human leather. It's that very sort of beige human leather color color isn't it yeah we're gonna have to change that as well <laughs> oh god and concava looks so good wow okay <laughs> i got it I, I keep getting sidetracked but if you have enjoyed today's episode or excited to see the adventures of milady dr Ju, and con camner and donny t consider liking subscribing and make sure you tell your mum about it and i'll see you next time thank you